Um, starting out today, uh, Sam Darnold update. Um, I think you guys have probably already heard, but uh, really, really good news, positive news, uh, extensive evaluations uh, this morning. Um, really just revealing um, a, a knee bruise in there, a little sore, but uh, hoping Sam can uh, have a normal um, week of preparation uh, as we go through it. And then uh, just updating you guys on uh, where Addison, uh, Turner, and Pace are at. They'll all be kind of day-to-day this week, um, optimistic, and, and hoping we can get them some good preparation and have a chance to have uh, those guys for uh, a very tough challenge coming up in Green Bay. Really uh, positive uh, areas jumped out, not surprisingly, all over the tape. Um, really want to highlight um, the special teams unit. Um, and in weeks like this, you can um, kind of overlook based upon the offensive performance or Sam's performance, running the ball well again, not turning it over defensively with five, five more sacks to go along with a lot of havoc on that side of the ball. But special teams I thought was phenomenal, really tough matchup against that team. They've got a good scheme and a lot of, a lot of good players in that phase. Um, thought Jay Ward and Caleb were outstanding, um, really in both uh, punt and punt return. And then uh, Ryan Wright, um, huge punt there backed up and another inside the 20 um, with some great coverage from Caleb Evans beating the double team on that one. Will with the 58 yarder. Uh, Will just continues to be Mr. Consistent and, uh, you know, seeing the, the where that hit on the upright is as of impressive as, you know, having the laser like uh, accuracy to decide he wanted to go ahead and ping that thing through off the goalposts in that moment. Wouldn't put it past him that that was what he intended. Uh, Brandon Powell, I mean, a couple of real close returns and then just super. The little things, right? We talk a lot about being situational masters. Him uh, on the, uh, the sky punt return ops, you know, simulating catching it, but then also getting a touch there on the uh, gunner to uh, avoid him being able to down it and then uh, probably not notice, but Ty Chandler um, getting all the way to where before that ball had even gone out of bounds, he's out of bounds already, knowing that if he then touches the football in the field to play, uh, that would have still gone to the 40-yard line. So a lot of cool things from a coach's perspective from our team. I'm very proud of the performance of our guys coming off of a physical, tough, hard-fought win against the Niners to, to come back seven days later and have that kind of performance against a, a really good team, um, well-coached, really good team. Um, was really proud of our guys. But the challenge now is we're moving forward. Um, as of you know today, we, we turn the page and uh, getting ready to go up to Lambeau Field, and you know Matt's got that team playing great right now. Jeff Halfley, who I've known for a really long time, uh, very few people I respect uh, on the defensive side as much as half, and and uh, I know he's going to have a great plan for our offense. And you know Matt's one of the best guys out there doing it on offense. So um, huge challenge going on the road. Uh, got to keep this momentum, but we do it by what we do on a minute to minute daily basis with how we continue to prepare the way we have uh, throughout the early part of this season. What did you um, know about Jonathan Grenard before he got here? And I guess what have you seen from him that has helped him be such an impact player through these first three weeks? Yeah, I just always evaluating him, Matt, was always like the get off. I mean, just the explosiveness of his ability to get off the ball. And then speed, power, athleticism as a rusher, um, really fits with how we want to play um, with the different variations of pressures. I mean, one of his sacks, you know, came on a tight end where there's some urgency to worry about all this stuff going on uh, at the line of scrimmage. I mean, another one, he's really Harry's, you know, aligned outside of him, you know, coming on a safety pressure, and they've got to push all the way out to him with the tackle, gives him a great edge rush on the guard. And then I think he, uh, you know, also another one, I think he eventually ended up somehow on a back. and. Um, late in the down, you know, Harrison Phillips, you know, with two two <laughs> impactful rushes on the same play, couldn't quite get him down, but uh, JG's there to clean it up. And I, I just think it speaks to, you know, not surprised we've been talking. I think I've mentioned it a couple of times to you guys, like the sacks were going to come when you have the pressure rate that he's had uh, through these first two games leading into yesterday. So not surprised, but love, love what JG's doing. What is the source of your relationship with Jeff Hathaway? Uh, shoot, my first job in Cleveland, he was the DB coach with the Browns for Pet, um, and we lived about three doors down from each other. 
uh, Coach Angelico was there as well, um, right around the corner. So we had a nice little uh, group of folks. My family and his family are, are close. I think the world of him as a person, um, and he's a fantastic football coach. Um, always, from the first day I met him, we kind of hit it off. And um, I really do respect him as, as much as anybody in this league. And a uh, very smart hire by Matt to bring him in there. And uh, you can see it, it's all over the tape. It's early on here, just diving into it. But um, they're playing really, really good defense. There were some snaps late in yesterday's game where it looked like Stefan was on the field a little bit, then Harrison wasn't on the field a little bit. Was that just like ref veteran kind of like thing through the course of the game, just being smart? Yep, that's all it was. And just really when you're the game day 48, you know, it's not like a preseason game where you could have a new wave of 11 guys. So it's just picking your spots for guys to maybe get a, a few less snaps. And, and it's not often, especially during my tenure here, um, not often we've been in that situation. But um, it, it speaks to the performance in its in totality of all three phases to be able to start out fast, capitalize on the turnover, score touchdowns, and uh, you know, special teams playing a role in the field position, and just never really given you know any any free moments in that game to kind of uh, you know lose momentum. Even the drive coming out of the second half, I thought was a a good example of that. Kevin Grenard was talking yesterday that he said many times as a veteran, he says I feel like I've seen offenses come at me, but when he practices against your offense, he says whatever Kevin throws, I was like oh. I haven't seen that wrinkle before. Or he likes kind of to pick your brain while they're at practice. Yeah. Well, what does that say to you when you have got a guy like that that is surprised at practice and then says that helps him game time? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always, I think, the most impactful feedback that I get is from our defensive players, <laughs> whether it's training camp, uh, even guys that we have here for a purpose and a reason. Um, Bobby McCain has been like that all season long. I mean, there's... Um, there's now plays where I, s I make sure they're scripted versus a certain look, and I tell him before, you know, knowing he's going to be in the perfect spot, exactly where the defender is going to be in the game. Hey, was that? Did that do this to you? Did it stress you like that? And he'll be like, No, I think if you did this, and and then we implement it. I mean, I am not going to sit here and and I can watch all the tape I want, but the real time feel of guys that have done it in this league. Being, you know, having access to a player like that with that kind of football intelligence has already helped. You know, a couple plays yesterday, a couple plays in the opener, a couple plays versus the Niners, and you know. So I think, you know, I love the feedback uh, in real time from our guys. I always love the post game feedback, just talking to some of the players that uh, great players we play against. Um, so I think it's all valuable. Kevin, uh, Aaron Jones was talking yesterday about. The uh, like a lot of players were about the vibe and the team that they just appreciate. Yeah. Um, I guess with these new guys like Aaron and Sam, <coughs> and your observations of, of how they kind of fit in, do it quickly, and seem to you know be really impressed, I guess, by the environment. Here. Yeah, it goes back to kind of the dialogue before, you know, in, in that limited time. Um, either before they sign or right after they sign in free agency. First and foremost, word of mouth, I think, travels, uh, you know, from a standpoint of guys talk, everybody's connected either through agents or uh, teammates, guys that have been here. I mean, I had a, you know, it was awesome catching up with Cam Akers and, you know, Chris Boyd, Daniil Hunter, and, and A, hearing that they're doing great where they are, because that's always my first. <laughs> Uh, priority, but when they use, hey, love you, coach, and loved being here, uh, lo this place is unbelievable. We, uh, Vikings fans are the best. I mean, you hear those things from from guys that have been here and moved on, and then the new guys that come here. I challenge them: um, do not be surprised by it, and capitalize on it, and improve it, and take something and make it better. And a guy like Aaron Jones, I mean, that's pretty easy for him to do. There's a huge reason why. Um, I wanted to make sure Aaron was a Minnesota Viking when we had the opportunity to bring him in uh, because I knew he's a classic case of a great player that will, you know, not only hopefully take advantage of, of what this place has to offer um, from what the players have built here, um, but also make it better. And he's a, he is a one-of-one -one type leader, human being, what he brings to the building every single day. 
it's no surprise that you see it showing up in between the white lines because we've been seeing it really since day one. And I'm so happy to have Aaron Jones here. Kevin, Justin said that he jammed his thumb on that cap yeah. and that he ended up having x-rays. And yep. Do you feel like in retrospect that affected those two balls? I don't know. I, I think the I think the second one, you know, that, that was a – I think it was a case of a practice rep um, or, you know, a practice rep of that play and then – the previous uh, one that Justin was able was not able to come up with, that was a little behind him. I think Sam might have been overcorre overcorrecting um, a little bit on that play, but uh, yeah, those were kind of two that 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 stuck out because you know third down was going to be a big um, stat in that game. You know, our first two touchdowns kind of came on third third downs in the red zone, and if you get those, maybe you know aesthetically, maybe the day looks. Uh, even better than it than it felt and than it was, but uh, it's still early on in the season. We're still, you know, we've got to get in a place where we're connecting on all those things, and uh, constantly there's still a lot of things that I can do better. A lot of uh, play calls that you know I could be give more clarity on. There's just a a thousand ways that we need to keep improving as a team, regardless of what the the results of these games mean. Absolutely nothing to me. You don't see any. No. No, yeah, and at the time, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd been kind of updated on some of the guys, but that was, uh, you know, I did, I'd, when uh, I think, he, did you ask me that yesterday? Yeah, I'd, I don't, uh, I had not been updated on it, but yeah, he came in, everything checked out. You said last night you spent more time with the defense. Yep. In your time, just in that room, in your conversation with Flo, watching what they've done, like what impresses you most about how they make it's so simple for them and so complex for the other side. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's it's one of those things where it, the initial presentation, the initial teaching, the initial learning um, throughout the spring when I, I tell you guys, hey, it's the learning phase, that's to provide a lot of runway. So then we get to training camp, then we compete, and ultimately throughout that whole process, it's really designed to build ownership, player ownership of our schemes and – Flo and his staff have done a great job kind of building it up. We've got some really um, impactful pieces from a communication and, and mental standpoint, Harry being one of them. Um, but it's not just him. It's, you know, Blake Cashman. It's, you know, Van Ginkle, Harrison Phillips from the interior, Grenard, um, you know, Byron, Shaq, and Steph being the veterans that they are. So there's uh, Metellus, Cam. There's just so many layers to it. Uh, what I love about it is – uh, you combine that player ownership with Flo's ability to put a game plan together that week based upon what we're going to get, what the answers more than likely will be, uh, and and how do we just provide as much stress as we possibly can for 60 minutes. That's my that's my challenge to those guys every week. I want to, you know, I want to feel the opponent working through that process every single week. Uh, easier said than done. There's great great coaches and players in this league, uh, but I felt. You know, for the third week in a row, I felt that enough to give us a chance offensively to sustain some some drives, score some points, and uh, still have a lot to correct and fix. Kevin, going back to Aaron, and I guess it probably applies to all the guys you brought in. But you kind of use the word smart, tough, and loves football. To yep. Describe every guy. You yep. Did. Where did you land on those pillars, and like, why are those so important? Yeah, I just think for me, um, coming out of you know, the, the more and more you get to do this job, you just start learning things. And I'm still learning things every single day. But um, it just, you know, coming out of last season, I just felt like where we were going to be going um, and, and just spending a lot of time with Flo on, on what types of players we wanted to bring in. You know, how, to, how, would we, how could we, you know, assist in making sure that the players that we brought in were um, fits for the scheme. But... Guys that are smart, tough, and love football tend to do pretty well here. Um, and there's enough of a sample size of that for me to feel strongly in that. And, you know, uh, we were able to kind of check a lot of those those boxes off with, with players that are playing very, very well for us. And, and, and Flo and I are not surprised by that uh, based upon the type of makeup and, and skill sets that we were able to uh, that we were able to bring in, that Kwesi and his staff were able to bring in. How do you prepare for the Packers quarterback situation? Yeah, I think uh, you know Malik is doing some great things, and, and Jordan Love is you know one of the best young quarterbacks in our league. So um, we'll prepare as if both uh, will play. We'll it, it'll require a little bit of of work on you know they are different 
you know, with Malik in there. But at the same time, he made some big time throws and moved the team. And uh, there were chunks on the tape that that we've got to try to keep off of our off our tape. And then when Jordan's in there, we've seen it firsthand when he gets into a rhythm and gets going. He's as he's as talented of a thrower as there there is in our league. So um, we got to be prepared for both of them. Um, we're not gonna. Uh, you know, we're not going to get the benefit of, of knowing kind of exactly what we're going to see. So we've got to make sure we've got a game plan that's extensive for uh, both those guys. And they've got a great group of skill guys, a really good running back, great old line, um, pretty special group. How impressive was Darisol's performance yesterday? Yeah, I thought it was really good. CD's been really rock solid this whole season. And, um, you know, you guys can you study, you study it enough and you see the, the hard down ends up on 71 a lot of the time with what we're able to do to kind of mitigate some some risk and damage potentially from uh, we've really played some some of the best rusher between Daniil and and Will Anderson and, and really they've got depth beyond that in Houston and going back last week with Bosa the opener with Burns and Thibodeau I mean it's an every week thing and it's no different this week uh, I think this is one of the better uh, fronts in football both the edges with Preston and Rashawn, and, and then the interior waves after waves of kind of impact players that they have. So um, it's going to be the, no different this week. So as good as he was uh, this past week and as good as he's been, and, and our line really as a whole have done a lot of really good things in the run and pass, like, none of that matters. we got a hell of a challenge coming up. When you, when you have a, a defensive scheme with this level of flexibility that players have, for the snap, what does that do for a defense's ability to stay ahead of a, an offensive play caller just trying to get a, a beat on what the defense is? Yeah, it's, you know, it's just the presentation of the, the offense has a play clock, the defense plays off of the offense, you know, so nothing will change. And as long as they don't change the rules on us, we can disguise and, and the offense has to adjust to what we're doing. And then we can get the different things from everything we line up in. So um, in the end, uh, you know, they have the. There'll be a penalty on the field for delay a game if they take too long. Um, we can wait till the snap and and legally do um, anything as long as we've got 11 guys on the field and they're allowed to line up anywhere. And we're pushing the boundaries on that a little bit right now. Hey Kevin, what was going through your head this morning? Just considering you know JJ going down last month, not even a year ago, Kirk going down and yeah. quarterback getting all those testing. Yeah, no, I I I'm. I'm been very excited about the start that Sam's gotten off to and I'm having an absolute blast coaching him. So when I saw him go down in the moment, um, there was the initial feeling because I did not see it. Uh, so there's the initial feeling there. And then, um, you know, he comes back in the game and I'm holding the call sheet so I can't clap like everybody else did. But I would have uh, when he came running back in the game. Um, and then just to get the good news today, we're moving forward. Sam's in a great spot. Going to have another good week of prep and keep stacking good performances.